Is is my hair just so for this interview? What do you think? Is my hair just so? <laughs> recording? We're about to go into the recording session. I guess it's time to think it's fine to put my career on the line and try to bring the orchestra to kids. You, you are, are the, the funnest, funnest loudest, loudest, most adventurous, and curious, and smelliest sweet, sweet audience there is. We'll bring you to the world of the conductor and the musicians and how composers did just what they did. It's magic. All we need is people who are passionate and crazy and are willing to put money where they kiss. We'll bring kids music, smart music, in vibrant songs. It all started one summer when many, many people came together to create a grand opera for kids. There were many, many steps taken to create this symphony, but before they started, they needed a foundation. That foundation was a plan and funding. Let's take a look at how they created this foundation. Hi, I'm Dr. Noise. I'm sitting here at Coverly Theater in Palo Alto, California, where we just finished filming the Kickstarter mini-musical for Phineas McBoof Crashes the Symphony. I guess it's time to think it's fine to put my career on the line and try to bring the orchestra to kids. <laughs> so what you're going to get out of the Kickstarter campaign is, first of all, a two CD recording, and we're going to use that to not only bring it to people as a recording, but also get more orchestral shows booked with symphony orchestras. And we're gonna debut it as a two-act opera for kids. It's a story about Phineas and his band and their new evil nemesis, Mama Mini. Yes, yes. yes ma'am! It teaches kids about orchestral and classical music in a fun way. The orchestra has a level of complexity and beauty and length that we don't have in popular music. And so um, giving kids the exposure so that they understand and enjoy and be inspired because of the project that we're doing here, I think that's critical. We got Nathan Gunn, this big opera singer, Isabel Leonard, this amazing opera singer, and Kyle Pickett, the finest conductor of kids' orchestral shows I've, I've ever met. It's easy. It's fun. It's still going to be funny. It's going to be great, but the music is going to be complicated. And it's going to make kids want to listen to orchestral music. It's not about learning how to learn about classical music. It just It's just there. This is important. It's important to treat kids as brilliant sponges of the most wonderful kind of music we could imagine giving them, and that is big 70-piece world-class orchestra with the world's best opera singers and Dr. Noise. What we're doing here with Dr. Noise is incredibly important because the future of music depends on the kids. Supporting a project like this is so important because not only do you support music on a whole, but you're supporting your child's own development and the way they perceive the world and the way they perceive themselves. Music and music education are an important aspect of a child's development, just as much as reading and writing and arithmetic and sports. What's great about the arts is that money then that you earn and then you give turns into something beautiful and not only in, in this case something beautiful and educational that will continue to grow and grow and you get a big bang for your buck. After a few funny faces from Riley, they had collected over $110,000 in all. Okay, so Kickstarter campaign, check. Donations, check. Awesome people who want to work on it, check. Now, what's the next step? Oh right, we have to actually compose this whole thing. Well, it's not as easy as it may seem. Well, writing it was really fun. I used the program Sibelius, which is a program used to score music. And um, we recorded it in a program called Pro Tools, which is also a really neat program. Um, and it was fun for me because I had not written something for the orchestra or uh, operatic in quite a long time. I'd done some rock operas, some people had called them, but um, I had not written for a full orchestra in a while, so it was really fun having the opportunity to do all that. And um, I had to harken back to things I learned way back in college uh, to make it happen, and it worked out pretty well. It was fun. It, it was amazing working with one of the best orchestras in the world. That was an amazing gift.
and then the next step, recording. <laughs> you know, it was really wonderful being able to do a full orchestral operatic album with Nathan Gunn. He has been on all of the albums and they've all been sort of pop albums for kids. And um, it was amazing working with one of the best singers in the world on this. And he's one of the funniest, nicest guys in the world. And Nathan was instrumental in getting us virtually all the other wonderful opera singers who were on the recording as well. Um, so that was, it was really fun to, even though he's done a lot of projects with us, it was basically, it was fun to give him a project that he actually deserves. <laughs> you know, something worthy of his talent. So uh, that was nice. Jerry Sienna and Seth Killen are so funny in their roles of Luciano and Jose. Um, and they, those guys were around at the very beginning. The first orchestral recording we made actually it was Jerry, Nathan, and Seth. We did an orchestral version of Banana with Kyle Pickett in the North State Symphony. And we <laughs> put on, awesome. Yeah, we put it on our second album and uh, people liked it so much that we decided to do a whole orchestral album. Was that short enough? It was really fun working with an amazing cast on this album. And the amazing cast was everyone from uh, three amazing soloist kids, who I know, Thanks. Sydney Riley and Grant from uh, the West Coast, um, and the Colorado Children's Choral, who were amazing. And we recorded them upstairs in my living room in our grand piano room. Uh, we recorded all the children's chorale parts, all 36 of them. Oh, we got the right choir, didn't we? Yep. All right, if you know so much as the documentarian, I have a pop quiz for you. What amazing actor played two completely different characters on the album? Uh, Ben Evans. He played deep voice Bottomus and high pitch Lenny. Which lead performer was my high school student when I was a high school music teacher? Katie Digovich, who plays Sydney the Beak. That's right, the rap and songbird named after? Me. In the gossip department, which lead performer kissed me during the production process? Oh, Mom. That's right, Mommy, who plays back on the actress. <laughs> way to go, Mommy, way to go. That's about the kissing, by okay. the way. Okay. Yeah. Finally, who is my favorite documentary filmmaker? Thanks. <laughs> I love you. We also had Isabel Leonard and John McVeigh, and, and Isabel was unbelievable to work on. One of the most amazing things in my entire studio recording career I've ever witnessed was there's a song that Isabel sings, which is sort of her big intro torch song on this album called Mama's Lament. And she did it in one take. And <laughs> We usually record a bunch of takes and a bunch of sections. And those of us who do pop music a lot, we're, we're used to, you know, doing little lines and re-recording little bits and making it perfect. And she recorded it and she said, uh, so what do you think? You want me to do anything again? I was like, no, I don't think we need anything else. That was <laughs> awesome. So go listen to Mama's Lament and realize that that was all one take. No pitch shifting or anything. It's crazy. Isabel, you are crazy. You're crazy good. What was it like going to Prague and recording with one of the best symphonies in the world? Well, I do that every day. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't do that every day. It was awesome. First of all, Prague. It was amazing going to Prague. I'd never been there. Prague, you you walk around Prague and you feel like you are in a place that understands the fine arts. I, I literally walked by the opera house where Mozart's Don Giovanni was premiered uh, when we would make the recording, which was amazing. Okay, no, I don't think it is. Here, let's... Here, I'll fix it. Here we go. Okay, yeah, let's... I mean... Recording with my awesome buddy, Kyle Pickett. 
uh, on a major orchestral recording project was a dream come true for me. Kyle and I have known each other since we were music students at Stanford. And he's a wonderful guy, and he's a fantastic conductor. Um, and I knew that if I got Kyle to go with me to Prague, the conductor would show up ready to master, knowing all the stuff, because that's how he is. He's just awesome at, at, at learning stuff and committing to it. And I knew that he valued the project a lot, partly because he's a parent, but, but also because he wants this uh, form of art, the orchestra, to be passed on to the next generation. So it was fun. Uh, his wife was there, and we had a couple of supporters, George Misuoka and um, a few others, uh, come with us, and that was fun. So it was amazing. Their, their recording room is amazing. They've got this whole microphone set up with Pro Tools and everything. The drummer was in another room, but everybody else was there. There was only a drummer on a couple tracks. Um, they didn't have any kazoo players in the symphony, which, frankly, I was disappointed in. I'm just really concerned if this is my best side. James Fitzpatrick, who manages the orchestra, was incredibly generous. Um, he realized that we needed one more session, that we didn't have the money and hadn't paid for, and he donated it. And that was worth like eight and a half thousand dollars. And we wouldn't have been able to do all the tracks without James's generosity and his expertise when we were recording. So that's awesome. Thank you, James. You're the man. You're the Englishman in Prague. Yes, you are. That's right. You don't always get things right the first time you record. Here are some funny outtakes from the recording studio. <laughs> Georgia, Georgia. <laughs> oh, I got Georgia on my mind. More instruments joined the orchestra, and contrast was achieved through elements like cadenzas. <laughs> <laughs> Which is kind of fine. Oh, it's about to get the bad. You do. There's some Corey. <laughs> yeah, that was beautiful. That's the first. Da, 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 da. <laughs> and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eleven, ten. <laughs> 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 Oh, they can hear us. They can hear us. Yeah. Isn't Hello, that Placido Domingo? I love you, Lenny. Uh, 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 oh, yes, uh, I do. Lenny, I love you, Lenny. 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 Ooh, uh, I know uh, it's true. Uh, do, 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 do. Raise the roof. Raise the roof. Raise the roof. I'm green. After funding, composing, and recording, now we have to put it all together. The guy who mixed this album is the guy who's mixed all the Dr. Noise albums. His name is Justin Peacock, and he is not a bird. He is a human being. So treat him like a human being, okay? I got your back, Justin. Justin is seriously the best mixer I've ever met. I love working with him. He is meticulous and obsessive, as I am. And he can tell you all sorts of stories about how annoying I am. <laughs> Sending mixed notes, you know, turn this one note, this one word up 3 dB for half a second. <laughs> Lives here in Colorado, but we actually mixed, the, he mixed the album in Spain and Morocco, because that's where he was working at the time. Pretty cool. He'd send me mixes, I'd respond, uh, and he'd uh, make little adjustments uh, because I was here in Colorado and he was there in Spain and Morocco. You know, mixing is always a very complicated process, but when you're mixing with an orchestra of 65 instruments, and uh, I don't even know how many mics we had, but there's a lot of mics. <laughs> um, and then we had a voice cast, of, I think there's something like 16 or 17 solo vocal parts. There's the Stanford Chamber Chorale Choir, which we recorded at Stanford. There's the Colorado Children's Chorale, which we recorded here. All of that has to be mixed together. There's a few overdubs. of Anton Schwartz played the saxophone. Um, and uh, so it, it's a lot of work. And uh, it was amazing what Justin did with it. And a lot of that credit also goes to the initial recording engineers in Prague, who were awesome. Mixing takes all of the disparate elements, all the different um, instruments, and you can adjust the volumes, you can adjust the EQs, you can roll off the bass, things like that. Um, and it's a, it's a combination of an art and a science that makes uh, a track sound really good. Um, uh, how do you place the vocals just so over the orchestra? How do you EQ the vocals so they sound good? Who's standing on the right? Who's standing on the left in the panning? Who's standing in the middle? It takes my really bad music and makes it sound really good. 
Ooh, doing the album cover was fun. I actually sketched out the design of the album on the front and back, which was a first. Yeah, I saw it. It was really professional. Yes, my sketches, you know, uh, you probably have, maybe you can show. My sketches are extremely professional. I'm an excellent artist. Um, and uh, so they took my horrible sketches and made it into something awesome. It was a company called Bouncing Pixel, an art, an animation studio called Bouncing Pixel in Houston, Texas, uh, did the artwork for us. And they were fantastic to work with. And I should give a shout out to Dave Kim and Outplays who donated the money to do the artwork, um, which was a significant amount of money and really allowed us to do that 3D animation artwork that looks so good. Um, uh, they designed uh, Mama the Bunny. My daughters get credit for helping design not only Mama, but uh, the idea of the character of Mama. <laughs> a couple of years ago, we were sitting around the dinner table and I was saying, well, we need a, we need a bad guy. Who should the bad guy be? It should be somebody who hates music. And one of you girls looked outside and we always have bunnies in our backyard. Uh, we're always wandering around our backyard rod bunnies. Um, <laughs> Ferocious and, bunnies. And one of you said, it should be an evil bunny, because that would be funny. And I said, yes, it would. Purple bunny. <laughs> we should have put that on the album. The string section is now playing. They had done it, a grand opera for kids. But there were still hopes for the future. Something bold for kids to do. Or I might come after you. Join the dance! Woo! 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 My simple hope is to bring the beauty of the orchestra and the colorful world of musical theater to kids and newcomers. Not just kids, but people who don't generally listen to that stuff, whether it's parents or, or just other adults. Um, and if I can do some small part in uh, keeping orchestral music and musical theater and opera and these sophisticated forms of music in the world for your generation, that would make me very happy. And so, I mean, that's why we all did it, you know, Isabel and Nathan and, and me and Kyle, um, the, the main four people involved in this, we all have kids and we all wanted to do it. We all wanted to bring what we love to you guys. Um, my hope moving forward is that a lot of people will book Dr. Noise to play symphony shows. So, you know, I've been playing some shows with symphonies bringing, bringing this music to kids and, and we've had uh, amazing responses and success when we've had it. And so that's the next step. We have the recording, uh, but everybody gets really excited and jazzed about a live performance. So the next step is to try to book as many live performances as we can and bring these crazy performances where kids don't feel like they have to just sit down and like focus on the music of the orchestra, but they can be sort of interactive in the show and they can get involved and, and they can yell and cheer and have fun, uh, sort of like at a rock concert. So that's the next step. And I, I, I hope we get a lot of those shows. That'd be awesome. Obviously we made this album, uh, this recording, because one of the best ways we hope for people to learn about the orchestra would be to listen to this album and, and get into the orchestra and interested in the orchestra through these characters and through this you know, crazy story and stuff like that. Uh, so my hope is that after people listen to this, they'll say, oh, I'd like to go listen to some music by that Beethoven guy they mentioned and that, uh, that uh, Vivaldi guy they mentioned and that Mozart guy they mentioned. That, that Mozart guy's a pretty good composer, by the way. I mean, it's it's like Bieber and then Mozart. It's like that. It's like that. Okay, um, and <laughs> so uh, and choral music. You know, listening to uh, choirs like the Stanford Chamber Chorale. So um, I'm hoping that people will use this album, kids and adults, as a springboard to going to explore more sophisticated music and orchestral music and opera and um, musical theater and Bieber. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm not kidding. I'm not saying that's just because you're here. What I enjoyed the most was uh, coming up with the story and writing the music with my kids' constant involvement and suggestions. Uh, and the fact that you guys were involved in making the production. That was amazing. I've mentioned all the great musicians and production people 
that I got to work with, but the people I'd really like to thank are the people who supported this project. And I, I speak for everybody involved, all of the performers and all of the producers of this project. If, if a whole lot of people hadn't stepped up and funded this thing, we wouldn't have been able to do it. And so uh, we are all extremely grateful, sincerely grateful to those people. I feel extremely fortunate to have had the opportunity to do this project and we really hope that you guys like it because we really put our heart and soul into it. So we hope it was worth your money and your time as well. The other thing I really enjoyed, uh, not only enjoyed but feel grateful for, is the fact that somehow I got to work with all this amazing world-class talent from Nathan and Isabel to John McVeigh, who's an amazing stage singer. Uh, his work on as Mama's Boy was unbelievable and he was the last one to come in and play a role and he elevated the whole project with his uh, wonderful performance. And the City of Prague Orchestra and, and Anton and the Stanford Chamber Chorale and the Colorado Children's Chorale. So all of that is a long way of saying I feel very fortunate to have worked with all this world-class talent and young talent. And it, that, that made it a joy right there. That made it a joy right there. You want me to Do wrap wrap it up? Okay. Yo, I'm Dr. Noise and I don't play with toys. I'm gonna be a joy. I'm a guy. I can't figure out something that rhymes with oys. If you can email that to me, I would really appreciate it. A word, another word that rhymes with oys, okay? And then I'm gonna take credit for it. Thanks.